Hello everyone. Let me start my devotion with an illustration. Billionaire and media mogul Ted Turner, founder and owner of CNN, said to a group of people that he grew up in a Christian environment. However, he said that he became disenchanted with Christianity when his sister died despite, according to him, his prayers. Some 3,000 years before him, another rich and powerful man went through the same experience. His child became sick and he prayed and fasted that the child would live. But after several days, the child died. God answered no to his prayer. But unlike Ted Turner, this man did not abandon his faith. The name of this man was David, second king of Israel. The example of King David in 2 Samuel chapter 12 gives us several principles on how we ought to respond when God says no. The background of this passage is David's affair with Bathsheba. After committing adultery and murder, Nathan the prophet confronted David with his sin and David confessed and repented. But this did not remove the consequences of his sins. In verse 13, we read here, Nathan said to David, The Lord also has taken away your sin. You shall not die. However, because of this deed, you have given occasion for the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born to you shall surely die. So when the child was born, it was afflicted with a serious illness. David prayed and fasted for the child, but after several days, the child died. God clearly said no to David's request that the child live. How did David respond to God's answer? The principle are several. Principle number one, accept God's no answer. Do not allow yourself to be disappointed or discouraged. Look at the example of David in 2 Samuel chapter 12. In verse 20 it says here, So David arose from the ground, washed, anointed himself, and changed clothes. And he came to the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he requested, they set food before him, and he ate. David accepted God's answer. How did he show that he accepted God's answer? He went on with his life. He did not sulk. He did not feel bad. In fact, it would seem that David did not feel he was rejected by God. Now you might say, it was easy for David to accept God's answer because he committed a sin and deserved a no answer. But what about me? I am trying to live by faith, staying away from sin, and I ask God for something and He answers no. That's rather hard to accept, isn't it? You know our problem? We immediately attach a negative connotation to a no answer. We are quick to equate no with failure, rejection, or lack of spirituality. The Apostle Paul was in the same predicament as many of you are. He was following the Lord, doing the Lord's work, walking in his steps, then God allowed Satan to afflict Paul with a thorn in the flesh. What did Paul do? He pleaded with the Lord three times for the removal of his thorn in the flesh. And what was God's answer? Look at 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. And he has said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Was Paul living a holy life when he prayed for the removal of his thorn in the flesh? Yes. Did God grant Paul's request? No. Did Paul accept God's answer? Yes. How did Paul show that he accepted God's no answer? He rejoiced in the Lord and continued doing the Lord's work. If the great man of God in the Bible accepted God's answer and moved on with the lives, so must we. If God says no to our prayers, then we must accept that and move on with another prayer item. We must not sulk or complain or insist on having what we want. That would leave us in a miserable state. Move on. Now I realize that it is easy to say accept a no answer and move on. But what is your basis? What's your reason? How do you do it? The answer is found in principle number two. When God says no, affirm your faith in God. Look at the response of David in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 21 to 23. Then his servant said to him, What is this thing that you have done? 
While the child was alive, you fasted and wept, but when the child died, you arose and ate food. And he said, While the child was alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who knows? The Lord may be gracious to me that the child may live. But now he has died. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. Notice what David says, Who knows? The Lord may be gracious to me that the, that the child may live. In his mind, the Lord will always be gracious. It's just a question of how the Lord will be gracious. Will the Lord be gracious to me by allowing the child to live? Or will he be gracious to me by taking my child home? You see, David did not change his high view of God. That is why he was able to worship him even after God said no to his prayers. And I submit to you that the best way to respond to God's no answer is affirm your faith in Him. I mean, you do not abandon the truths you've learned about God just because you received a no answer. Hold on to the truth because the truth will always be the truth regardless of what happens to you. One of the most powerful truths we can hold on to is the truth that God, our God, does not change. God is good and will always be good. God is gracious, faithful, merciful, etc. and will always be gracious, faithful, merciful, etc. to us. Regardless of our circumstance, regardless of our feelings, and regardless of our response to Him. The God who loves you continues to love you and will forever love you even if He says no to you. This is one of the great comforts in the Christian life. So when God says no, you have to believe that it is the best answer to your request at that particular time. The best answer to you as a person and the best answer to you in the circumstance you are in. Therefore, when God says no, it is best to respond the way King David responded. The Bible says, He came into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Friends, when you receive a clear answer from God, whether it is yes or no or wait, then rejoice because God has answered your prayer. Therefore, it's time for you to worship the Lord. May God bless you all.